All right, this is Brian from Go Hunt and Brian from Grangers. We are super excited to go over some products we have in the Go Hunt gear shop. Uh, we and the team here at Go Hunt have been using Grangers for a number of years. Uh, great products, helps uh, extend the life of our gear, and Brian's going to talk about them and educate and help us better understand uh, application for the product. So let's jump into it. Yeah, so uh, Grangers makes um, products for clothing, gear, and footwear, and we have some of the some of them uh, here with us today. We have a, a, a down series here um, to take care of all your down and synthetics. Uh, we also have uh, what we call clothing care, and that's everything from soft shells to hard shell rain gear um, to even like base layers, fleeces. Uh, um, that sort of thing, things that are not down or synthetic insulation and outerwear. Um, footwear, so shoes and boots, sandals, whatever you need. Um, we're talking about mainly, you know, mainly uh, shoes and boots uh, today, but uh, you can take care of all your shoes and boots. Uh, and then tent and gear care kit, and that's really your tents, your backpacks, duffels, um, things that aren't necessarily wearables. And we'll talk about a little bit how that's different. Um, but really what this is all geared at is extending the product life of whatever you're using. So if we're talking about footwear, it's, it's talking about, hey, how do I keep my footwear not only lasting longer, but also performing well every time I go out, whether somebody's hunting or uh, using the same boot for you know, a day hike or a backpacking trip, right? You want it to be performing well, keeping your feet warm and dry. Same thing goes for clothing and down and synthetic. It's, you know, how do we go out into the backcountry, stay warm and dry, protected, um, but also, you know, extend the life of that, that garment yeah. so that you're not having to change it, you know, every year. Right. You might add to your kit over time, but you're not having to replace that specific product. Yeah. What do you guys think one of the most miscon like common misconceptions about, like, gear care is? Uh, there's a lot of them. Um, I think probably the most common is that if you wash your gear, you're going to somehow ruin it. Mm -hmm. And I think where that comes from is that people have washed their gear in like a, a detergent they find at the, the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, and if certainly if you, if you wash your gear with that type of detergent, you're going to degrade the DWR of whatever you're wearing. Or you're going to, if you, you know, wash your down jacket, the down's going to clump and never come back to full loft. It's just that type of detergent is not intended for the purposes we're talking about. Yeah. So I think people have that stigma and it's and rightly so because they've had bad experiences. Um, but modern technical detergents, especially what we're talking about here with Grangers, are meant to uh, you know, clean whatever garment you're talking about, um, add DWR where, where necessary, uh, but really you know, keep that product fully functional um, and not degrade any of its performance. Nice. So I think, I hope, I hope the story that people take away is that you know, they can feel very comfortable washing their $400 down jacket or their $300, you know, rain shell mm -hmm. and know that when they wash it with the right stuff, they're actually going to be, you know, prolonging the life and the performance of that garment. So a question we get from customers often is, how often should I apply uh, DWR treatment? Yeah, that's a great question because, um, one of the other misconceptions is that you need to reapply DWR after every wash. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> part of the story, just to give more context, is that when you use the correct uh, washing uh, solutions, it's going to wash your garment without stripping the DWR from the garment. Sure. And so the short answer is you don't need to reapply DWR after every time you wash. Um, depending on your use, you can get away with three, five, maybe even seven washes before the DWR is degraded. Nice. Um, with hunters, though, we're typically talking about people who are exposing their, their garments to much higher abrasion, um, you know, worse elements than you'd get on like your average day hike or day at the ski hill. So your DWR in those types of conditions is going to degrade faster. Sure. So a good way is just to test. We all know, you know, that's why I say it's just test your garment at home. It's really quick and easy. Yeah. Uh, we all know what our garment was like when we were new, yeah. you know, the first rain would come, water would beat exactly. off, it was super nice, like, oh gosh, I'm so glad I bought this. Um, and we all know what degraded DWR is like, where you're out there and you're soaking wet and yeah. you feel like you're wearing a trash bag. Yeah. 
Um, so when you're at home and you, after you've washed your garment, uh, throw it in the dryer. Um, simply throwing it in the dryer um, for the recommended time that your label says, that'll typically revitalize uh, the DWR on your garment. After it's dry, spray, spray or spritz or drop some water on it. If it beads right off, then you know you're good to go. Nice. And if it sits there and soaks in, then you know that you, know, you should go back to the DWR stage and reapply. Nice. Yeah. So what product do you guys recommend for a DWR treatment? Yeah, so if we break it into categories, um, things that would have DWR treatment would be, like I said, down, clothing, and then footwear. And I'll start with clothing because this really, it, it kind of applies to all the categories. But with clothing, um, we have kind of three ways to wash and retreat with DWR. And um, the first two people are very comfortable with from seeing our products or other products like that out there in the market. Um, the two most common out there are a wash and then a spray application of your DWR. Um, the second is a wash and then a separate wash in cycle of, of DWR. But the thing that's really unique to Grangers is that we are the only brand offering a two-in-one product. So anytime you see blue, whether it's a clothing product or a down product, this is a two-in-one. Uh, we're the only brand that does it and it's the by far the easiest way to wash and retreat. It's a single wash cycle. You know that uh, when you throw your garment in there with a two-in-one product, it's gonna get washed, it's gonna get retreated, and then all that's left is to put it in the dryer or hang dry, um, sure. depending on the, the care label. Nice. So those are the, the three ways you can do it. It's really a little bit of, a, it is a personal preference. Um, you know, this first option is nice because you can choose to just wash your garment and not do any other DWR application. Um, if it's, um, if you're dealing with a garment that like you wear a lot under a backpack, you can choose to, you know, kind of target the DWR spray, shoulders. the shoulders, waist belt, maybe like where your bino harness goes, um, knees, seat of your pants, that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, so this, this option is really nice, kind of having those separate. Um, as kind of a foolproof, you know, make sure you get it all everywhere. This option is also really nice. You can do a separate wash, um, and then your dedicated DWR cycle is just going to ensure that it gets everywhere. Yeah. One of the questions we get, get with this is like, well, okay, if it gets everywhere, does that mean like the inside of my garment too? Like, is that a problem? And yeah. It's really not. Um, you know, our formulations are such that it maintains breathability. Uh, we have no residue left over, so if you have like a uh, let's say a hard shell with like a brushed inner or like a fleece lined. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get any beading or streaking. Everything's going to wash off and you won't be able to know that you have DWR on the inside. Sure. Um, and that's just going to rub off with like wearing your garment. Um, but that's a good way to just make sure it gets everywhere head to toe. Um, and then yeah, the, the super easy button. I use this a ton at home for, for my clothes, my kids' clothes. You know, I'm a parent, I don't have a lot of time, so yeah. the blue bottle helps me out a lot because I know that it's just a single wash cycle and then dry and I'm done. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of the ways you can go about it. Nice. Now, the same things apply for down. Um, you know, you have a, a, a down two-in-one option. You also have a, a, a down option where it's just a wash. Um, and then we also have products where you can, um, you know, wash your down and then target the, the shell fabric sure. to spray it. So. Nice. Yeah. And I've used the, the downwash kit and it was it was amazing to see the life come back to my old sleeping bag and my puffy. Yeah. yeah. It was that's what kinda turned me to Granger's just um, it felt better, it was fluffy, it it uh, did a lot better once I washed it. And yeah. I was always worried and scared to wash my down because it's just naturally you don't want to ruin something that's so get so delicate. Right. But like you said, there's no residue left over. <laughs> It's going to help it uh, revitalize. And um, what else would you? Why else would you tell customers watching this video why you should wash your down? Well, yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, uh, down products, whether it's a sleeping bag, I'm glad you mentioned sleeping bags. Um, whether it's a down uh, a sleeping bag or you know an, uh, a garment, um, you're, you're dealing with two things with down. You're not just dealing with the shell fabric that's going to get dirty. Um, so let's talk about that for a second. Um, the shell fabric on a down garment can be treated with DWR. Uh, there's lots of down jackets out there that are treated with DWR. There's lots of sleeping bags that are out there that are treated in some way with DWR or a different shell fabric that's water resistant. So keeping your shell fabric clean and functioning properly is like absolute number one thing. So yeah. 
there's the first part. The second part, which is unique to down, is that you have this insulation inside. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, your, your body oils, your sweat, um, and then other outside factors um, will actually get into the down. And for synthetic, it's kind of the same. It gets into the synthetic or gets into the down. With down, it causes the down to clump and stick together, so it becomes less insulating. Yeah. Um, it traps odors more, so it's stinky. Mm -hmm. um, and it becomes less packable. Yeah. So there's kind of like those three things that we're trying to solve with a, a you know, washing down. Mm -hmm. um, if you go a step further, you know, once you've washed your down and kind of restored all the great characteristics from when it was new, um, if you wanted to treat your down product with our two-in-one, that's actually going to give you a DWR coating not only on your face fabric, but also on the down uh, fill itself. So, you know, if you're sitting on the side of a mountain and you're wearing your down insulation and it starts to drizzle a little bit, you don't have to, you know, call fire drill and reach yeah. for your rain shell right away. Right. You know, you might be fine if it's just a short little uh, rainstorm. Sure. Um, or, you know, yeah, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility in the field. Yeah. Can you use the down wash for like a synthetic bag? Is there any value in doing that? Absolutely. So synthetic is, we talk about down and synthetic almost interchangeably. Um, down is obviously, you know, has some diff different characteristics, but with synthetics, you still want it to be clean. Mm -hmm. uh, you want some odors, you know, washed out from the fill. Um, and you can also use the DWR to coat your synthetic fill for the same reason why you would use that on the down product. Sure. So our, our down product is, is absolutely interchangeable with synthetic as well. It's good to know. Yeah. A nice thing is, you know, when you buy a down kit from Go Hunt, you're going to get uh, our down product, either the wash or the two-in-one, but it's also going to include dryer balls. Yep. And uh, our dryer balls are specifically formulated to be the optimum weight to fluff your down while not compressing it into oblivion. Yeah. So and I, I was telling him before this, I have the Granger down balls and I use them for all my laundry. So I just, they stay in the laundry room and dry everything with them. Yeah. Keeps everything fluffed up, you know? Absolutely. I like it. Yeah. So don't be afraid to wash her down. Yeah. Don't be afraid to wash her down. Yeah. You know, you got sleeping bags. I know my dad has an old North Face. It's, I think, 30 or 40 years old, and he's washed it a couple times, and it still is performing. Um, and it'd probably perform even better if he washed it even more. Yeah. So you can really make that expensive bag that you've had for years last even longer. Absolutely. I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't have a, a down jacket or a down bag last 10 years, almost at the minimum. I mean, if you are, you know, good with your product care and, and keeping it clean, um, you know, aside from getting it like ripped open or something, yeah. some kind of like, you know, external damage, um, we can really talk about extending the life of these products we use every day beyond what somebody would normally think of as its life cycle. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that's often over overlooked though is footwear. So we've yeah. talked about, you know, down, we've talked about kind of our, our you know, outerwear clothing. Uh, by the way, this uh, the green cap, which is performance wash, also works really awesome on base layers. Um, it, whether it's merino or synthetic, you know, all your base layers, underwear, fleeces, um, it, it's kind of our do it all. Mm -hmm. And it's, I should mention that it's concentrated as well. So you get kind of, you get 12 washes from this little bottle. So this covers a huge gamut of yeah. what's in your gear closet. But going to footwear, I think footwear is something that's really often overlooked. Um, I, I think that there's probably a few reasons for that. And, and one, I think, just personally, is because you don't typically throw footwear in a washing machine, yeah. right? So it's a more manual process. Um, but the same principles that apply to you know down and all your other clothing apply to footwear as well. It's, a, it's the same construction in a lot of ways. You know, you have a, a, a liner of some kind, with, if it's a Gore-Tex or Event or whatever the membrane is. You could have unlined shoes for sure. Uh, but then you have, you know, a face fabric, um, which is either going to be full grain leather or some kind of mix of synthetic textiles. Yeah. Um, and the exact same principles apply to footwear. If, if your footwear is not clean and taken care of, then you're not going to be getting the, the performance that you would expect. So, um, you know, clammy, hot, sweaty feet when not they fun. shouldn't be clammy and hot and sweaty. Yeah. Right. Um, 
you know, that's also something that you can, that, yeah, everything we've talked about with clothing applies directly to footwear. Nice. Yeah. And then uh, lastly there, the tent and gear care kit. So we're talking about tents, sleeping bags, uh, shelters, um, you know, uh, nylon webbing, if, if you're using nylon webbing or paracord or stuff like that. Um, but, you know, um, we obviously want our tents to keep us, you know, warm and dry when it's raining out. Um, same with our backpacks. We'd love our backpacks to do their job and keep the contents as, as dry as possible. Um, and so, you know, taking care of, of those items and making sure they're properly washed and then reapplied with the DWR is, is really important. The nice thing too about the tent and gear products we have is that there's a UV inhibitor. So, you know, your tent is out, you know, all day when, it, when you're in the field, Multiple right? days, yeah. Multiple days, it's exposed to the UV. Uh, um, you know, it's not hiding under a tree like we are sometimes. Yeah. Uh, same with your backpack, it's out there, it's getting scraped up, it's getting leaned on. Um, so, you know, these are really like, these are products that are exposed to the elements a little differently than our clothing. And so um, we offer something to take care of those. Yep. And we've used this quite a bit, the tent, tent and gear cleaner. You can use this on your backpack after the season, getting all the blood off. Yep. You do it in the tub or in a big Getty cooler and like soak it after you scrub it. Um, really, really helps clean your stuff up. So what I need to do is just apply that same principle to my tents. Yeah. You know. So Absolutely. when you do that, do you just you set them up, or do you actually keep them on the ground, just like scrub them? Would you say you can do it kind of either way? I prefer to set my tent up, mm -hmm. and I'll I'll set it up uh, without the rain fly on first, and I'll just get the bathtub of it clean, sure. so I can kind of you know in my yard or somewhere soft, I'll flip the tent on its side, and yeah. kind of clean the floor of the tent, uh, and then proof it, and then put the rain fly on, and then do the same thing to the rain fly. Um, in the kit, we, we have our, our cleaner, our proofer, and then a sponge. So you can yeah. apply via the sponge. Uh, you can dilute the cleaner in a bucket of warm water if you want. Uh, it's, it's a fairly easy process. And with a tent, it's not something that needs to happen a ton. Sure. I mean, you could kind of do it at the beginning of your season, and then if you come back and your tent's all dirty, you can probably get away with spraying off the dirt with a hose, similar yeah. to, you know, you only have to wash your clothing necessarily. You just spray it off and it's going to be well taken care of. Yeah. I try to also keep all my tents um, inside my house, like in a storage area versus in my garage where it gets like maybe 110, 120 degrees in the summer. Maybe not 120, but it gets hot in the yeah. garage. Is that yeah. advisable to keep, it at, keep, keep your tent out of a really hot spot? Or is yeah, it really mad? Yeah, I think, I think all of our gear, you know, any, any, any gear, any technical fabric um, should, you know, if possible, be kept away from some of those really large temperature swings or, you know, I know in Vegas you don't have a lot of mildew, but there's a lot of parts of the country that deal yeah. with uh, mildew or moths or th things like that. So I think it's important to think about where you're storing your yeah. gear for sure. Yeah, so to summarize, um, you know, we've talked about kind of all these ca categories that Grangers offers and that, and that Go Hunt stocks. So we have, you know, all of our products to take care of your down, uh, the wash, the two-in-one, uh, the DWR spray, um, your general clothing category that covers everything from base layers to, uh, you know, hard shell and soft shell outerwear. Um, again, with two-in-one kind of being a highlight there that's super unique. Uh, and then footwear and tenting gear. So really, you know, um, you guys have a really good smattering of the assortment we offer and it's kind of everything that somebody needs to take care of, you know, all their gear. Yep. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below and have a great day. Thanks for watching.